hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Synology Router Manager 1.2 I want to talk about the Synology software that you get with your router and with your Synology mesh router now for those who are eagle-eyed looking at my uh, my video list you'll know that I've already kind of done a video like this about six or seven months ago when the router series was you know more and more developed and when the meshes were finally released in Q3 and Q4 of 2018 but because I'm going to be comparing all of the latest mesh devices, I'm looking at Linksys, Synology, Edimax, Trendnet, and Google uh, uh, router system and all those mesh networks. What I want to do is revisit the Synology router system here. I've already done a video about how to add mesh points. And while I've got SRM 1.2 up and running, I thought I'd give you guys a good overview of what the software is up to right now in right uh, as of recording this March 2019. But I'm sure this video will go live at some point in April. So... Here we are at SRM. Once you get your Synology router, be it the RT2600 or the MR2200AC, regardless of which one you, you go for, you get um, to download the Synology software for free. It has loads of features and functionality that can be very, very useful to you. And on this particular device, uh, this is the RT2600, I have added two mesh points as well. So I do recommend that you check out my video where I talk about how the mesh system can be useful to you and the speed and performance differences between the Synology mesh system um, uh, on it uh, as a whole with three different uh, points of access against a Synology router on its own. So there's all the mesh points there dotted around my office environment. If you want to know what that looks like, check out my mesh speed test video. But I'll stop plugging. So, SRM. To access the device, go to router.synology.com or you can use the Synology Assistant software to find the mesh router on your local network or you can use the mobile application DS Router for iOS or Android. From here, you can completely configure control and alter and get analytical information about your network. Now, one of the things I mentioned in my previous video, let's go back to that control panel, when comparing against the Linksys system that I've been recording, was that the software that you get with the Synology almost makes up for the price difference. The Synology um, router and mesh router system does typically cost more than most mesh router systems. If you get the three mesh point Google Wi-Fi, that costs you about 310, 320 pounds right now for three points. Um, if you go for the Linksys Velop system, that's about 300 quid as well. And again, that's three. If you go for the Synology RT2600 and two mesh points, it will set you back almost 450 quid. That's a big, big jump. But the reason for that is as follows. One, the DSM software is incredible on this device. There's so much going on with it. And a lot of the features and functionality, such as Google Safe Search, such as um, Safe Access, such as tailored client protocol and um, creating... Um, it's kind of a client and user groups where all of a person's devices that connect to the Wi-Fi can all be batched together. These are things that other mesh prov providers are charging you for. So in the case of Google, they're not charging you for it and you have Google Safe Access, but you don't have anywhere near the client uh, control that you have and the use, the easy user-friendly nature of the client control that you have on the Synology um, router management system. Also on top of that, the profiles and the security and the applications in Linksys, they charge you somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds a year for the um, Linksys Shield uh, subscription. Something that is included, no additional cost, in the Synology NAS. So within the first year of owning the Synology NAS, it already costs less than Linksys's system in terms of software. And then on top of that, because of the four antennae on the RT2600 Synology router and the mesh communication between them with those LED lights for indication, you can cover a larger surface area with the Synology and two mesh routers than you can with four Wi-Fi mesh pods of Linksys or even that Trendnet one that's very cost effective. So don't just look at the price, look at everything else too. So in our network center here, we go to the top, let's get rid of that control panel and the package center. From here we can see the bandwidth and networks that we have as well as the security and the network 
that we had. They've tried to keep things as user friendly as possible. Right now, this device is being connected to via a Synology DS219 Plus NAS. There's my desktop PC in the corner. There's a Netgear uh, wireless switch that I've connected to one of the, um, the mesh points. So as you can see, even a device that's connected to a mesh point appears here, as well as mobile phones, another NAS and more. All of these devices are connected right now to this uh, router, net, uh, this mesh network. We can see more on the internet, we can do the usual port forwarding and everything is kept as simple and user friendly as possible with guides available online. But what's quite cool is when you want to start assigning devices because most mesh systems let you either completely stop or disable internet access or give some devices priorities. It's only the Synology system that includes these features for free to give um, bulk items. So say you've got um, someone in your home, your wife, your son, your daughter, your husband, your whatever, that has a mobile phone and a laptop. You can identify these devices and assign them to individual users. So you can say those devices belong to this person. I want them to utilize X number of hours of internet per day, or I only want them to access these websites. At the click of a button, you can set it up that your children them regardless of whatever device they use can only access certain websites can only access educational websites can only access entertainment websites at certain times of day so again you can create profiles so if we create a profile now we'll go for this and we'll use myself as an example so we're going to come up uh, we can come up with uh, a guest if you have someone in your house you can create individual rules for la um, land area network devices or a user profile for a person. So if we use me, we can even update a photo of me. I'm not 100% certain there's a photo of me on this machine, but let's give it a try anyway. Let's go for, in my documents, surely I've got a photo of me somewhere in here. There we go, Hanover for work. I must have taken a picture of myself sometime when I was in at CBIT. Here it is, there's a terrible picture of me there. I think that was the day where I was kind of sleepy. I hadn't really slept much towards the end of that, but there we go, we've got a name of me there, we'll call me Robbie, we'll carry on moving forward, and here is where all the devices that are connected um, are now available to see, so we can say, so right now, uh, that NAS has been disconnected, so it does have a history of older devices as well, so it keeps a complete history of all devices that have been connected, so right now I know that this PC is mine, that other PC is mine, and we're going to say that NAS is mine. We're going to say those devices all belong to me. And then we click create. So now we've assigned that these devices on our network all belong to me. And if that wasn't me and it was someone else, we can now control what that user can see and do. So just real quick, what we'll do is we'll create a second profile just to show you the difference between them. So we'll look for another picture of someone. So hopefully we've got a picture of someone in here. There we go, someone's wedding. We're bound to find a picture of someone at a wedding. I don't think that album's complete. Let's have a look. We're going to use Jason, a friend of mine. Let him there. There's Jason. And we're going to do that. Very intelligent man. Lovely fella. Recommend his company. Um, go along here. And we'll say that in for him, he owns this NAS and this NAS. So we'll say he's running two NASs for backup on this local area network. Let that finish. And it really is this straightforward to create user groups. Of all, and remember, it's going to keep a history of all the other devices that are connected. Lastly, we'll create a guest Wi-Fi person. And this is going to be a guest profile. This is for Pete, friends and family that come round. And you can say that this is the person who's coming in sporadically. And you want to make sure that if they are a guest user and you create a separate guest Wi-Fi login, which you can do, that user will have these you these rules and credentials so say for me we're going to go for the web filter so here's where we can say and you can create even more bespoke categories if you want and again other services other mesh devices will ask you to pay for things like this you can set it up that in the case of me i'm an employee we don't want these sort of things so we're not going to let me have all of those so we created all those filters there if we go back We'll go into my account because remember if you're an admin you can access all of this your end users will not be able to see this 
and you will be able to see just how much internet they're using and how and what. So let's say for me, we're going to give me that work filter. We're going to say that I'm an employee. And there we go. We've now set it up. You saw that list on the screen of all the websites and the content that I'm allowed to visit and view. A time quota. From here, we can set up how much internet you're allowed a day. So you can set it up that every day it resets. Or you can do a custom fill where certain days of the week or certain times of the day you have unrestricted or no access. You might not want your children to have access to the internet after 10 p.m. You might want to make sure you've only got access to certain websites like social, Facebook and more at given times of day. And the same goes for internet scheduling. You can set it up that there's no internet to a certain user at a certain time of day and more. And Safe Search, of course, is the one that um, is an extra layer that Google supply to certain mesh router devices that allows you to have filtered content to certain websites um, as you're on them, you know, live and dynamically. So you don't have to rely on just a website being blocked. It can actually block content from within a website. And again, some mesh routers, and I'm looking at you, Linksys, will charge people a monthly subscription for this, and Synology have included this lifetime inclusion in your software. So again, it's that straightforward to create these settings for an individual user, as well as see all of their history. So for someone else, you can set up a completely bespoke and different setup, you know, very, very easily indeed. So for this person, let's say, do you know what, I love Jason a bit, but let's say he's a child. And again, you can come up with far more personalized templates if you so choose. And this level of access and control is very, very unique. And the, the one mesh device that I've seen that provides this level um, of um, filtering is, of course, Google's Wi-Fi. But they don't give you as much bespoke creation like this and still keep it user-friendly. Most devices find the problem being that they either make it too complex that people find it too much of a hassle or a learning curve, or they keep it far too simple and then it becomes restrictive and almost unusable because all of the more tricky options are hidden away or not available at all. So again, you've got more um, options for um, you know protection from people uh, breaking into your connection on websites that you don't want to visit. You can get an entire breakdown of activity from individual users and produce reports based on network activity of your individual users. And you can set up bespoke notifications or preset notifications to administrators or individual users. You can also set up a reward system that I quite like, whereby if a user, for example, has three hours of internet a night, you can set up a reward system that if they don't do anything to break the rules, that is to say, to try to access outside of a time, to try to go to websites they're not supposed to, they can earn automatically an extra hour or an extension to the amount of internet they're allowed, which could be quite a good reward system for kids, and a penalisation system, which again, not, isn't available from any other vendor. Now, Wi-Fi Connect, as I've mentioned in a previous video, is where you can muck around with the wireless connection to your router, be it to the individual device or your mesh network. I've created this mesh network with two extra devices, and you can see not only what devices are connected and their individual strength, but you can run full individual network connection tests on each of those Wi-Fi points. So you can find out right now what the Wi-Fi transmission is on the, pre on the primary device, the main router, and of course this four aerial device is doing all of the work because I'm closest to it. But if I was closer to these mesh Wi-Fi points, as I've just done now by walking over there uh, with the tablet, we can now see that the speed has increased. I come back and here we are. So you, there, this is live and dynamic access and control and checking of the data going back and forth on your wireless network. And of course, you can tailor that guest network as well, as bespoke as you want. You can schedule it, they only have internet at certain times of day. You can throttle it to certain time, uh, you know, to certain speeds to make sure that a guest isn't gonna hog all the internet in your home or business. And again, the whole thing can be adapted very, very well in a user-friendly fashion. And there are guides and updates and more information available online. You can even set up the Mac filter that denies certain devices on your network. For those that aren't aware, Mac addresses are very bespoke to different models and every, all electronic devices have their own Mac address. So you can restrict certain Mac devices, uh, Mac addresses on your network. That isn't Mac as in Apple Mac, but 
the kind of digital signature of a network device that you do not want to have an internet access in your home or office regardless of its new or old. So very useful indeed. As you can see right now my phone is trying to update and connect to Facebook because I've restricted my device from accessing Facebook. This is quite nice. Because I've restricted my user as an employee on my phone, what's happened is my phone has tried to get a Facebook update and it's now been blocked because of that filter. The Facebook app has tried to send a ping and it's been restricted. How cool is that? You've got to actually witness it happening firsthand. Um, now, if we go to the package center, as I kind of briefly touched on earlier, you can add updates to your system. There aren't a whole lot of apps at the moment, but there's still going to be more coming all the time. And Synology are definitely investing very heavily in this wireless network and mesh and routers. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the next router has in store. I'm hoping it's going to be 10 GBE, to be honest. I think it's about time. But Download Station lets you utilize not only the device to, for downloading torrents, podcasts, HTTP, FTP, and NZB, but because both the mesh points, the MR2200AC and the RT2600AC have got USB ports, you can install a USB drive very easily and download onto that drive or just make that drive network accessible. So here we are live on the video. I'm just gonna chuck in a USB drive. It's a standard USB 2 drive. I'm gonna connect that to the back of the router to see what it does. And in fact, why don't I go over to one of the mesh points and add a USB port to that as well. So hopefully there won't be any issues with regards to compatibility, but I can tell you right now that I've connected two USB drives, one to the primary router and one to the one of the mesh points. So if we go to the file station application, our USB storage should now be visible. We can see that one of the USB drives has appeared, but of course, because I formatted it, it is going to be very difficult to see that appearing in another network. If I connected wirelessly to this device, the second USB drive would appear on the Wi-Fi network. But again, because of the format on those USB drives that I use for backing up um, outside of Windows, I think that is going to be a difficult thing. But we can't really blame Synology for that USB drive not appearing the way it should. But apart from that, the VPN Plus server, you can buy uh, VPN licenses or use your own VPN service provider, as well as installing further guards and protection from malware, ransomware, and more using threat prevention. And again, very, very few other brands, um, maybe Netgear um, are the only ones that let you install further applications within this portal. All of the mesh routes I've seen so far use either dual core or quad core, Qualcomm or Qualcomm. Uh, network CPUs that aren't designed to be used in that way. And although the MR2200ACs do use that quad-core uh, Qualcomm CPU, all of them are 800 megahertz, the main RT2600 has a dual-core 1.7 gigahertz ARM chip, and it is more built like a NAS, hence why it can have this user interface and this great level of access and control. Now, I'm going to wrap things up here because I think I've proven well and beyond that this does give you significantly more than any other mesh router or indeed router system at the moment. I did a comparison a while ago with the Netgear Nighthawk and with new Nighthawks being released, it'll be interesting to do another comparison of the RT2600 against the new range of X Nighthawks along with more mesh routers. But if you've got any questions, I'm going to have these devices with me for at least a couple of weeks. So do let me know if there's anything I can do or show you guys that you want to know about in these world of Synology routers, mesh routers, and more. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know I have, and I can't wait to see you in the comparison videos coming soon. Click like and subscribe. Cheerio.